I have a document here that I'll, I'll present something here and show the evidence from the Quran, and so therefore, uh, hopefully, it will be kind of a, a solid and reliable information. I have something here outlined. The headline there is the hypocrite's shahada. The hypocrite's shahada. You see, we've, we're familiar with the term shahada. The term shahada is is a Arabic phrase that means a term that means witnessing, bearing of witness. You see, bearing of witness, and the average. Muslim uh, will tell a person, a, pers a prospective uh, uh, inquirer about Islam, that in order to become a Muslim, you have to declare the shahada. The shahada. And by shahada, that means something called shahada tain. Shahada tain. Two shahadas. Two, two phrases of, de uh, of declaration. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu an Muhammad Rasulullah. I bear witness that there's no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. And when you do that, they say takbir, uh, you're Muslim. They ask you to hold your finger up and so forth. Now, what they're doing in the literature that they have, uh, they have different shahadas, you see. So the the basic uh, uh, declaration is what they call declaring a fact, the fact of a matter. The fact of the matter is la ilaha illallah Muhammad or Rasulullah. They state that as a fact. Whether you bear witness to it or not, that's, they say that's a fact. That there's no God but God and Muhammad is the messenger of God. In order to become a Muslim, they say you have to bear witness now to that. You see? La ilaha illallah, Muhammad or Rasulullah. They state that. And then they say you have to bear witness to that to become a Muslim. So I'm personally saying, based on the Quran, that that la ilaha illallah, the shahada Muhammad or Rasulullah, is a hypocrite's shahada. It's a shahada that's declared by the hypocrites. It's not a shahada that Allah has ordained for anyone to become a Muslim. <laughs> So I'm saying the hypocrite shahada or, or hearsay versus they said. Hearsay versus they said. Because this particular hypocrite shahada is something that is hearsay. You heard somebody say that. That's not where in the Quran. There's no way in the Quran, Shadow Line the Law, Shadow Muhammad Rasulullah. It's only stated there by the hypocrites, which will come to that. But other than that, you found that in the Hadith, in the Thick books, and the Tafsir books, and the Hidayah books, and all these different books that Muslims use as secular sources of guidance for them. So that becomes hearsay. Hearsay. Someone said that the Prophet said that so and so and said that so and so is the case. Hearsay. So we said that's hearsay versus they said, because in the Quran it tells you what they said to become Muslim. What they said. We want to see what they said. We don't want he said. Mm -hmm. We want to see what they said. You see? And then I said, in conclusion, I want to know what's in your speech. You know, the little commercial says, what's in your wallet? <laughs> what's in your wallet? I want to know what's in your speech. Mm. You see? Because that'll, that'll be the way I conclude. You see? Mm. Because the law talks about the best of those in speech. So I want to know what's in your speech. Mm -hmm. I want to conclude. Any questions so far about anything here? <coughs> Any objections to anything that's been said in terms of hypocritical shahada and all that? Because you don't have to go for that. You can say, brother, wait a minute, I think you're out there a little far, you know, to say that that's a hypocrite's shahada, you know, the shahada thing. Everybody in the world knows that that's what you say. You think you really want to say it like that or do you want to correct that speech? Anybody feel a little jittery about it? <laughs> They can, they can voice their opinion and all that, and then we'll note it, and then we'll carry on and see if it really carries weight. I had thoughts, but it's just that I'm so, like, shocked completely. But I was thinking, and I, this this question was brought up way before, I'm going to try it. Mm -hmm. um, like, 
if we are born Muslim, mm -hmm. were they Muslim before Prophet? I think somebody actually asked me that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. and so I think it's a very probably common question. And if they were, then what do they used to say in order to convert or yeah. become Muslim? Well, that's a fair question. That's mm -hmm. a good question. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. you said, if we are born Muslims. Yeah. So the point is that we're not born Muslims. Yeah. We're not born Muslims. And the second part of that is, yes, they were Muslims before the Prophet of Islam. They were Muslims. Every Prophet of God was a Muslim. Was a Muslim. Was a submitted to God. A submitted to God. So in their language, whatever their language were, that's what they translated submission as. It, everyone couldn't say Muslim if they didn't speak Arabic. If Arabic wasn't their language, they'd have to say in whatever language were that they ad adhere to. That when they submit to God, they would say it in their language, and it would e it be equivalent to saying I submit. So in English, we say I submit. I don't say Islam to. You see. I say, I submit. That translates Islam, Muslim. Okay, so let's take a look. Now, for the hypocrite Shahada, let's take a look at 63 1. 63, chapter 63, verse 1. And I'm saying that when you say, I'm saying it right out now on this videotape. Could be anywhere on the planet Earth after today if we circulate it. I'm simply saying, looking into the camera and saying that anybody who declares this shahada, a shadow in the law, a shadow of Muhammad Rasulullah, has become a mushrik, not a Muslim. They are mushrik. They are mushrik. They have associated, they partner with God in that shahada. Wow. That's what I'm saying. Uh, 63.1 and they have removed themselves from Islam. They haven't become a Muslim, they have removed themselves far away. 63.1. What does it say in 63.1? When the hypocrites come to thee, they say we bear witness that thou art indeed Allah's messenger, and Allah knows Thou art indeed his, uh, his messenger, and Allah bears witness that the hypocrites are surely liars. Look at that. Allah says, when the hypocrites come to you, they say, we bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. They come and say, as shadow on Muhammad or Rasulullah, something equivalent to that. The hypocrites. They come and say, as shadow on Muhammad or Rasulullah, we bear witness that you are the messenger of Allah. So Allah retorts to that by saying, Allah knows that you are the messenger. He knows that. He knows that you are the messenger. And he bears witness that the, the hypocrites are liars with what they just said. They're liars. You see? Because if they bear witness that you're the messenger of Allah, they could no longer be hypocrites at the same time. They would be followers of the message, bearing witness to it, upholding it, and they would be mukmins. You see? But the mere fact that they said that, Allah calls Allah now affirms that he knows that. He didn't say Allah doesn't say he bears witness that Muhammad is the messenger. He says he knows that. And he says he bears witness that the Muslims are, that the hypocrites are liars. Now let's take a look at 1343 and we can see why this double shahada is a forgery. It's fake. In the Quran, chapter 13, verse 43. What does it say? And those who disbelieve, those who disbelieve say, Thou art not a messenger. You're not a messenger. The disbelievers, you see? The people who are ungrateful. They're ungrateful for Allah having revealed uh, this revelation to them. They have rejected it. And, uh, they conceal it or whatever they do. So they're ungrateful people. And so they come, they, they stand in front of this messenger. They're standing right there with them and tell them, You are not a messenger. So Allah says, Tell them, say, 
say to them, Allah is sufficient as a witness. You see? Kafa billahi shahi. Allah is sufficient as a witness. And between between me and you, and whoever has knowledge of the book, you see? Whoever has knowledge of the book. Because anybody who has knowledge of this book will know that this book has been revealed by God. And anybody has knowledge of the book in general, whether it be the Injil, the Torah, or whatever book revealed from God, will know that it prophesied the coming of this messenger who would bring this final revelation. They have that knowledge. They will look in the book of the Deuteronomy. The Old Testament talks about a prophet like Moses. They will look in the New Testament, talks about where Jesus is talking about the comforter who would come and guide them in all truth. They will have studied all this information. And so they have knowledge of the book and they say, this guy is a message of God. But Allah says he's sufficient because he's provided the evidence already. That means is he sufficient, he doesn't need you to bear witness to his messengership. When the people said, you are not a messenger, Allah didn't say, well, why don't you ask them to ask this person here to bear witness to you? You see, that could have been done. We say if you look, just look over in chapter 10, verse 16. In chapter 10, verse 16. You see, and, and, and if you just read the verse before it, verse 15 says, And when our clear messages are recited to them, those who have no hope in the meeting with us say, Bring a Quran other than this or change it. Say, tell them, it is not for me to change it of my own accord. It is not for me to change it of my own accord. I follow naught but what is revealed to me. Indeed, I fear if I disobey my Lord, the chastisement of a grievous day. Then it goes on to say, look, say, tell them, if Allah had desired, I would not have recited it to you, nor would I have made it known to you. I have lived among you a lifetime before it. Do you not then understand? So Allah could have said, well, look, these people know you. You've lived around them and all that. Ask so and so and so and aren't you a messenger? Ask this one to bear witness to you. Get, to bring some witnesses. So brother, you know, uh, you said that you were a mechanic. I said, uh, you're not a mechanic. So look, this guy here, I fixed his car. Ask him. I fixed his car all the time. I've been fixing it for years. Ask the brother down there. He knows I work on cars. Ask the guy over there. I used to work for him at that company. Check the, check around. you see that I'm a mechanic. Everybody knows that. Allah didn't ask him to go get people to qualify or certify you. Allah says he's sufficient as a witness. And there's nobody to bear witness to you. To bear witness to mm -hmm. some, someone or thing, you have to be present. You can't be a witness to something you're not present to. You go to court, and they say, call, call your next witness. They say, I'd like to call Brother Derek. He said, Derek, you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, not the truth out. You guys, yes, I do. Excuse me. What's your name? So and so and so and so. So, were you there at the so and so? No. No, I wasn't there. So, you wasn't there. No, the guy told me, well, excuse me, disqualify you. You're not qualified to be a witness. Mm -hmm. That's hearsay. We don't want to, you see, if you watch Judy, Judge Judy all the time, she said, don't tell me what you heard. You know, that's hearsay. Don't tell me what you're, don't tell me what somebody said. Don't tell me what they said. You see, that's hearsay. So, the Quran does not accept hearsay information. So, Allah says he's sufficient to bear witness. So now, so now, we want to see even if that's the Shahada in the first place, how do you become a Muslim? Because they say that's the way you become a Muslim. If you just think about it, when you say, Ash'ad Allah and Allah, Ash'ad Muhammad Rasulullah, what does that say about you being a Muslim? There's nothing about being a Muslim in that at all. Mm -hmm. You haven't said nothing about being a Muslim. You talked about being a witness to something. Say our friends, the Jehovah Witnesses, come to the door. And they say, I bear witness that there's no God but God, but Jehovah. So they become Jehovah Witnesses. So you say, I shall rely on the law. You become a law witnesses. You see? That's what you've heard. Uh, I, I, Muhammad, so you become Muhammad witnesses. You see? You are Allah witnesses, Muhammad witnesses. That's what you are. And what do you do now when you do that? You give equal authority to both. That Allah can legislate for you and Muhammad can legislate for you. That's why you bear witness to that. 
what Allah tells you to do, and what this man, Muhammad, prophet, as a prophet, what he tells you to do, you do it. I'm going to show you evidence of it also. So now, so let's take a look here and see. According to the Quran, who is a Muslim? Who is a Muslim? Who is a Muslim? Well, let's take a look. Let's start here. At chapter 5, verse 3. Let's start there. Chapter 5, verse 3. What does it say? Verse 3 says... Forbidden to you is that which dies of itself, and blood and the flesh of swine, and that on which any other name than that of Allah has been invoked, and the strangled animal, and the beaten to death, and that killed by a fall, and that killed by goring with a horn, and that which wild beasts have eaten, except what you slaughter, and that which is sacrificed on stones set up for idols, and that you seek to divide by arrows, that is a transgression. This day have those who disbelieve despair of your religion, so fear them not and fear me. This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor to you and have chosen for you Islam as a religion. You can stop right there. This is the segment I want out here. Where Allah says there, this day have I perfected for you your, they quote, religion. It's deen. The Arabic word is deen. And completed my favor for you and chosen for you Islam as your, quote, religion, deen. I'm not going to argue that right now. We don't accept that term, religion. But we can talk about that if you want to make a note and say, well, brother, what's you have a problem with religion and all that and deen? I don't want to go into another discourse right now. Then we can do it in the, in, in the sidebar. Like right, the sidebar, right? Yeah, okay, that's so. the hardcore yeah, ones. The hardcore. This day have I perfected for your religion. Completed my favor for you and chosen for you, Islam as a religion. Islam is a religion. You see? So now, we're thinking that Islam is some proper name for this religion that only God accepts. When that cannot be the case, if you look in the Quran, it'll talk about Allah, it talks about those who are Christian, Jews, Sabian, but whoever does the will of God, submits to God, one thing after the other. So this is a description of someone. This is a description of something, you see? Islam is a description, meaning submission is your, obedience is your way of life. You see, following legislation, to follow the legislation of God, be obedient to it, and, and, and I'll, I'll be a, a pledge allegiance to it, and submit to it. This is your way of life, you see, that God dictates for you. Don't you, you can make just secular rules and, and, and things that govern your social and ethical. Uh, 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 ethical and economic life and all that based on the broad principles that Allah has outlined in the Quran. You can, based on that, not to contradict or go beyond and set up new things. In other words, if God says that he's treated you male and female and that you love each other and bear children, it's not for you to go and say, well, look, you know, can, can we have same sex married and all that? Can we marry and you and I? Is we marry and all that? What does God say about that? He says, no, not that. Well, I don't think that. That's, you know, we set up our own society, make our own politicians, pay them, and tell them to make laws for us. And they say, okay, uh, look, you're going to keep me in office? Yeah. Uh, you, what do you want? Same sex marriage. Okay, give them that. Hmm. What do you want over here? Give them that. Oh, we don't want that. Don't give them that. Uh, we want to have guns that got thousand rounds of magazines and all that, so we can mow down people and all that and do what we want to hunt. And the people say, no, we don't want that. It says, well, look, uh, never mind that. Just keep that. You know, what the, what the people want, you see, out here in these societies where hunting and all that, we don't care what the majority of people say. But over here, uh-oh, they're talking about immigration and all that, and we're not getting votes and all. Okay, let immigration come. You know, just play along with people so you make laws. So 
That's not what Islam is. Islam is the, 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 to let God legislate for you. Now, of course, of course, humanity, just like they have at the United Nations, they supposed to have a world body of thinkers who come together and think about what God has ordained for mankind and hash these things out. That's what the Hajj was originally about. That's what the Hajj was about in that society. All it was the crossroads roads of life at that time, and people would come there and they would debate and talk and discuss and kill slaughter animals and feed the people and all that, and then go back to their societies and spread the dictates of God. That's what Abraham wanted that situation to be for mankind. For, in that society, not for the whole global earth. You see, and we'll talk about that when we begin to talk about Hajj. You see, Allah has not made provisions in the Hajj for a global concept. You see, transcontinental Hajj. There's no such thing in the Quranic concept. But we'll talk about that. You had a question you was going to bring. Yeah, I was trying to understand. And again, I'm going to excuse uh, myself with limited knowledge here. But the sentence that says, you know, we perfect the Yudin, or way yeah. of your life, the yeah. way you describe um, it's actually mentioned in chapter 5. Yeah. I mean, usually when I read a book, this typical yeah. book, is yeah. at the end. Yeah. Okay, I mean, up to this point, you mean everything's already given? Yeah. You see, Allah talks about He having arranged the Quran. Oh, okay. So, so you, okay, I gotcha. So, in chapter 75, let's take a look. Oh, okay. So, we'll just settle that. 75, starting verse 16. See, the Quran is not to be read like you read a novel from chapter 1 to chapter 3. You understand, it comes like that, but the, the, the information in the Quran is spread throughout the Quran, you see. And so Allah wants you to look for that information. You go hunting for it, you see. And then gather that information on a specific topic, and it will be made clear to you, not to try to read and say, oh, I done mastered the Quran. You haven't mastered it, you see. So Allah says, move not your tongue there with to make haste with it. Surely on us rests the collecting of it and the reciting of, of it. You see, we collect it, put it in order, we recite it, you see. So when we recite it, what you do is you follow it, you see. Again, on us is the explaining of it. Don't you try to explain it because you don't know nothing. You didn't know nothing just a minute ago. All of a sudden now, mm -hmm. you know how to put God's revelation somewhere. You know, so I think I'll put this here and I think I'll do this here and I'll do this here. You know, you know I come in your house uh, and ran and I said, oh. I wonder why he put that stuff up there. Let me move this over here. And look at what he got that. Let me move that over. You come back in your house and say, well, why did you move it? said, I didn't like the way you had that stuff. It didn't look right. No, this is your house. You do this here. When I come here, I just enjoy the atmosphere and all that and be comfortable. Mm -hmm. Don't you come and move stuff and do that and things around. So now, so he's perfected it. You see? Meaning after this, you you have everything you need now. No, no need for any why he your revelation to come from God, you know, giving you any more orders regarding your your lifestyle. You see. Now, if you look, that's making the, the so-called religion. Now look at twenty two seventy eight, and then we'll move on with the discussion. Twenty two seventy eight. Twenty two seventy eight. And strive hard for Allah, 2278. And strive hard for Allah with, with due striving. He has chosen for you, he has chosen you and has not laid upon you any hardship in your religion. The faith of your father Abraham, he named you Muslims before and in this. He named you Muslims before and in this. That the messenger may be a bear witness to you and you may be bear witness to the people. So keep up the prayer, they say, and pay the poor rate, and hold fast to Allah. He is your protector, excellent protector, and excellent helper. So he's named you Muslims before and in this. He named the religion for you. He named the practitioners. You see? He named the religion. He named the practitioners. There's no so-called religion. There's no religion on the earth, so-called religion, that other than Islam, that God has named. On the planet Earth today, other than Islam, that 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 the Scripture says God has named it Himself. Anything else is man-named. 
Hinduism, Buddhism, Judaism, Christianity, blah, 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 whatever. It named after people, places, and things. Christianity named after the Christ. Buddhism named after Buddha. Judaism named after Judah, and the tribe of Judah, Judea. And one thing after the other, Hindu after whatever. Whatever. They're all man-made names. Only Islam, submission, surrender to God, is named by God. And that's the natural way of everything that exists. Everything that exists is in that state of submission to God. So he named the way prescribed for you, and he named the practitioners of the way. Okay? So now, now let's get into the subject matter here. Because we say Islam and Muslims. Now, how did you become a Muslim? So let's take a look at 3101. Three one oh one. Three one oh one. Oh you who believe. Keep your duty to Allah as it ought to be kept, and die not unless you are Muslims. That's what the law says. All you who believe. All you people who are uh, who are aspiring to become believers, who trust him, who want to trust in God. Keep your duty to him the way that you should keep it, by following his dictates, of course. And don't die unless you are Muslims in Arabic or submitting ones in English, unless you are submitting to God. Like James says, submit to God. Like Jesus says, whoever does the will of my Father, the same is God. Uh, and like the Lord's Prayer, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done. We want your will to be done on earth the same way it's been done in the heavens, in all of creation. We want your will to be done on earth the way we see your will being done in all of the creation. God's will, you see? So die not unless you are uh, Muslims, you see? So now I was talking to Brother Tariq the other night. He said, well, look, um, why do you think it's so important to become a Muslim? Why do you think it's so important? So I turned it back to him and asked him why it was. So we went back and forth and like that. I said, first of all, the law says don't do it. So therefore, I mean, die not unless you're Muslim. So that's his uh, order to you. You should try to find out now what is a Muslim, what is being so and so and so. And don't question him. He's not to be questioned. But then I thought about it later on. I said, wow, you know. You can't become a believer unless you're a Muslim. You can't become a... You, the, the goal is to become a, a, a believer. And you can't do that unless you first become a Muslim. We'll come to that. You see? So that's why it's important to become a Muslim. You see? Because you can't become a believer other than that. You can't jump being a Muslim to a believer. So now... I think so. I need to write that down real quick. That's right. No, because we discussed this before at Tariq's yeah. house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 28. Let's take a look at 28, 52, 53. So Allah said, don't die unless you become a Muslim. So it's a very important matter here. You see, unless you become a submitter. And we don't want to get in this mindset, Muslim, and then we start thinking, Oh, Saudi Arabia, people with a lot of black covers on and head you, and that Taliban and Iran and Iraq and this kind of mindset. So we get these pictures of people with all these garments on and these gloves up to the arm and all that. This is not the thing we're talking about. We're not talking about that. That's some religion that has nothing to do with the Quran that these people are doing. That's some customs and traditions and something that's been fabricated and hijacked. Uh, and uh, from the Quran and propagate it as what Islam is and we're saying that's not it and we can always back that kind of thing up when we talk which would probably be the next segment when we talk about the idolization of Muhammad Excellent <clears throat> All you believe, keep your duty to Allah as it ought to be kept and die not in this room Now, in 28.52.53 Those to whom we gave the book before it they are believers in it and then when it, was, when, when it is recited to them, they say, we believe in it. Surely it is the truth from our Lord. And we, are, we were indeed before this Muslims. Look at that. So, the operative 
descriptive term here is that they said something. You see? Remember we say, hearsay versus they say. Hearsay versus they say. And when it was recited to them, they say, we believe in that, what you recite in us. We know that it's the truth of all. Remember we said before, uh, we, the, the uh, sufficient of the law is, uh, is a witness and those who have knowledge of the book. So here's the people who have knowledge of the book. When the prophet is coming to those people, whether it be the so-called Jews at the time or the Christians at the time who had their revelations already and he's dealing with them and talking about the certain things, those people who trusted the book as it was, the way it should have been, you see, they say, we welcome you. We've been waiting for you. We've been looking for you. We know that what you're saying is the truth from your Lord. We were before that already submitting. So we down with it. We already welcome you, you see. Those who rejected and all that say, you're not Muslim. We don't want you. We're sufficient with what we got, one thing after the other. See? So they say, we were before this Muslims. Look at chapter 15, verse 2. To show you the, ser the seriousness of when the law says, don't die unless you're Muslims. The law is coming back and letting you know in case you're thinking about doing that. He's going to warn you again. Mm -hmm. And in chapter 15, verse 2, often will those who disbelieve wish that they were Muslims. Allah says, those who disbelieve will wish that they had submitted to God. That they had submitted to God. You see? Let's take a look at this verse in the book of uh, the book of James, I mean the book of uh, Matthew. Very famous verse here, set of verses here, that not normally get read in church. Matthew chapter 7 verses 21 and 23. Matthew, the book of Matthew, chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. You see, where Jesus is telling the people there. He says, Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. Not everyone that comes saying to me, Lord, 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 how are you, Lord? You, you sleeping already? You all right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. Okay. Not everyone that says unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven. But he that does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, look at that. The one who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven, that's the one who's going to be okay. The one that does the will of God. Now he says, many will say to me that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, in your name cast out devils, in your name done many wonderful works? Did we do that in your name? In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> you just sounded like Jack Evans when you yeah. said that. In the name of Jesus. Uh, Everything is in the name of Jesus. So he said, they're going to say, Lord, Lord, have we done did these things in your name? And then he's going to say, look at verse 23. Then when I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. You people are calling me Lord, Lord. Now this is going to be the so-called Christians. There's no other body of people on the earth calling Jesus Lord, Lord. Not the Jews, not the Hindus, not the Buddhists, not the Muslims. It's only the so-called Christians that call him Lord, Lord. Not everyone that says to me. Now, certain versions of the Bible will say what? None of them. None of them that say, Lord, Lord. You see? Now, ye that work iniquity. This word iniquity is a Greek word, anomia. It means lawlessness. Ye people who don't have law. You people who will live your lives predicated upon your own ideas and so forth, not based on the law that was given to Moses, that was handed through by Jesus, and finalized through the Quran, the law. But anyway, up until this time, you didn't live by the law. Because why the Christian world today, doesn't go they don't govern themselves by the law of God. They believe that salvation is earned through the grace of God. The grace of God by sending his son to die for their sins. You see? So according to Paul and his letters, he said, the law is a curse. 
And one thing after the other. We know these scriptures very well. We can hold our own in having that discussion. Anyway, just wanted to point that out. Now, let's get into the meat of what we say here. How to become a Muslim. Say you submit. You cannot become a Muslim until you have said that you submit. Now, let's show it up. Unless you have said at some time in your life that you submit, you have never become a Muslim. As a matter of fact, even if you said to somebody, I'm a Muslim, I submit. If you have said that Shahada before that, it has negated everything. It doesn't matter what you say. Until you renounce that, if you have said it, you have to renounce that and begin again. Right. Based on what we're going to show you. Look, give an example from Abraham. Abraham. Let's start off with him. Because he's the first person in the Quran that Allah specifically identifies as a Muslim. Mm -hmm. Abraham. Abraham. Which one is it? Chapter 2, verse 130 to 132. Chapter 2, verses 130 to 132. Chapter 2, verse 130 to 132. And who forsakes the religion of Abraham, but he who makes a fool of himself? And certainly, certainly we made him pure. In this world and in the hereafter, he was surely among the righteous. Look at this, what the law says. When his Lord, Abraham's Lord, when his Lord said to him, Submit, he said, I submit myself to the Lord of the worlds. That's not to be rabbinical, our enemy. I submit myself to the law of the world. So now, what does that tell you right away? That prior to that, Abraham was not a Muslim. He wasn't born a Muslim. Mm -hmm. right. He wasn't a Muslim. Now, who, who better to be a born a Muslim than Abraham? If anybody's going to be born a Muslim, it would certainly be Abraham, one who God says is my friend. God called Abraham his friend. Can you imagine God calling you his friend? Of You're God's friend. Imagine that. <laughs> You know, God said, look, you're my friend. I own everything, and you've got your life and everything, and you're my friend. Mm. You see? So now, when his Lord said to him, submit, he said, I submit myself to the Lord of the world. Verse, next verse. And the same did Abraham enjoin upon his sons. He commanded his sons. And so did Jacob. O oh my, oh my son, surely Allah has chosen for you Islam. So die not unless you are submitting ones. Don't die unless you're Muslims. So he put the, both the things together now. Chosen for your Islam and then you're Muslims. So Allah has chosen for your Islam and don't die unless you're Muslims. What we just opened up with before, remember? Die not unless you're Muslims. So that's Abraham. Now let's look, take a look at chapter 3, verses 66 to 67. Still regarding Abraham. Chapter 3, verses 66 to 67. Chapter 3, verses 66 to 67. And Abraham was not a Jew nor a Christian, but he was an upright man, a Muslim, and he was not of the Muslim king. The nearest of the people to Abraham are surely those who follow him, and this prophet, and those who believe. And Allah is a friend of the believers. You see? Abraham was not a Jew, nor a Christian. But he was a Muslim, you see? That's what he was. A Muslim, you see? And those so-called Jews and so-called Christians who submitted, they were Muslims as well. They were Muslims as well. Those who believed and submitted, you see? They were Muslims as well. It's not what you call yourself, it's what you do, mm -hmm. you see? Unless you're calling yourself contrary to that which you do, you see? You're calling yourself contrary to that which you do, then you need to really examine what you call yourself. Now, so we see Abraham here. Allah is identifying him as a Muslim. And how he became a Muslim. He said, Aslam to Li Rabbil Alameen. So, if that's what he had to do to become a Muslim, what, you, what, what makes you think you have to do something different? He didn't have to say, Shalom Allah, Shalom Muhammad Rasulullah, Shalom Moses Rasulullah, Shalom Noah, somebody else. 
They have to bear witness to Noah, to Adam. And shout out Adam was still lost. He didn't have to, Adam was before him. Noah was before him. He didn't have to bear witness to them. He just said, I, I submit myself to the Lord of the world. Right. Now, of course, if he submits himself to the Lord of the world, he has to know live our law. He has to know that. Otherwise, why would he be setting himself, submitting himself to the Lord of the world without being understood who that Lord of the world is? Now, we can go through that. I just want to take you that right now. But if you insist, I'll take you there. But right now, <laughs> we'll go to the next one. I'll have that ammunition in case somebody wants to come and jump with that later on. <laughs> <laughs> so now, let's look at this so-called female, well not so-called, this female ruler who people call the Queen of Sheba. I don't know if it's the Queen of Sheba or not. I don't know if I, that's in the Quran saying Queen of Sheba, but she was certainly a female who was in command of her people. So in, in chapter 27, verses 44, 2744. And the context of that starts at verse 23. 27, 23. 27, 23. 27, 23. Up to verse uh, 44. 2744. Look, let's go through it real quick. 23. I found a woman ruler over them, and she had been given everything, and she was uh, had a mighty throne. I found her and her people adoring the sun instead of a law. And the devil had made their deeds fair seeming to them and turned them from the way uh, so that they go not aright. So here's some information that came to Solomon about some someone who had journeyed somewhere in the land and they saw this woman who was in charge of her people, you see. She was the ruler of her people, you see. But they worshipped the sun. They were sun worshippers. And the devil had made them, had sent them astray. Verse 25. So that they worship not a law who brings forth what is hidden in the heavens and the earth and knows what you hide and what you proclaim. A law, there is no God but he, the Lord of the mighty throne. He said, We shall see whether thou speakest the truth or whether thou art a lie. Take this letter and, and hand it over to them, then turn from them and see what they return. She said, O chief, an, honor, an, an, honor, an honorable letter has been delivered to me. It is from Solomon. And it is in the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Proclaiming, exalt not yourselves against me, and come to me in submission. She said, O chiefs, advise me respecting my affair. I never decide an affair until you are in my presence. Until you are in my presence. They said, we are possessors of strength and possessors of mighty powers, and the command is thine. So consider what thou wilt command. She said, surely the king, kings, Surely the kings, when they enter a town, ruin it and make the, the, noble, the nobles of his people to be low, and thus uh, they do. And surely I am going to send a present and see what the answer of the messenger will bring back. And I'm not going to run in there and pilfer this town and all that. I'm going to be nice. I'm going to send a present, a gift, you see. 36. So when, they said the envoy, uh, came to Solomon, he said, Will you help me with wealth? But what Allah has given me is better than that which he has given you. Nay, you are exalted because of your, of your presence. In other words, you're sending me stuff and all that. I don't like need your wealth and all that. That's not nothing for me. Go back to them. So we shall certainly come to them with hosts, with, with hosts, which they have no power to oppose. And we shall certainly expel them, therefore, in disgrace while they are abased. He said, O oh, chiefs, which of you will bring me her throne before they come into submission? Anyway, let me go on over to my point and get to verse 4. You can read this context later on. Take too much time. In verse 4, it was said to her, Enter the palace. But when she saw it, she de deemed it to be a great expanse of water and prepared herself to meet the difficulty. He said, Surely it is a palace made smooth with glass. She said, My lord, Surely I have wronged myself. Now here's the point. She said, remember Abraham said, I submit myself to the Lord of the world. She said, here's what she said, My Lord, surely I have wronged myself. I submit 
with Solomon to Allah, the Lord of the world. She became Muslim by, at that time. She said, I submit with Solomon. I submit with Solomon. She just said, I shall not in law, shall not Solomon resume law. She said, I submit myself with Solomon. I'm going to join with him. He's already a Muslim. I'm going to become with him and submit to the Lord of the world. He's already a Muslim. Right. I'm going to submit with him. Or Adam and I'm I'm of the Muslims. To the Lord of the world. That's what she did. You see, that's how she became a Muslim. Okay. Now, I was going to say, if I understand correctly, is it more of an act or the word that I saw somewhere, Kala Aslam to Rabbul Alameen? Yeah, it's just about you saying. You, you have to declare that. Okay. You have to declare that so that Allah knows that you've declared it. And if, if possible, you let someone else know because they'll know. You say, you say, look, I have submitted myself to the law of the world. Or you say that so Allah knows that you have confirmed that, you see. Allah knows you don't have to say it. You have to confirm that within yourself that that's what you have done. Once you understand who he is, then you declare within yourself that you have submitted and you go on that course and do that. Now you can tell other people that as well when you confront them. I've submitted myself to the Lord of the world. You see? That's how you became a Muslim. You didn't become a Muslim by saying, Shalom, Allah, Shalom, Allah, Shalom, Allah. Sure, really. There's nothing like that nowhere in the Quran to do that. Let's go take a look at Pharaoh. Pharaoh should know. Pharaoh. Pharaoh proclaims himself God. That's how powerful he thought he was. Pharaoh, the Pharaoh of Egypt during the time of Moses. He proclaimed himself to be God. He did much bigger than that. Chapter 10, verse 90. Pharaoh. Well, let's see what happened with him. According to what we read here. Chapter 10, verse 90. And we brought the children of Israel across the sea. Then Pharaoh and his host followed them for oppression and tyranny. Till when drowning overtook him, when drowning overtook him, he said, this is what he said. He said, I believe that there's no God but God. I believe that there's no God but he in whom the children of Israel believe, and I am of the Muslims. What well, am I a Muslim mean? Look at that. See, Pharaoh, when Pharaoh is running behind the Moses and all that, trying to catch up with them, and he finds himself in that predicament that he's about to drown now, and he sees that, oh, Pharaoh's. I'm not God. Right. I'm not God after all. Look at this. My life is getting ready to be taken away, flashing before me now. He says, I believe in the God of Moses and the children of Israel. I believe in that God, not me. And I submit myself with Moses to the Lord of the world. I'm down. I'm getting down right now. Because he knows now. It's the end. But look what he said. He said that. That's what he said. He didn't say, Shadow of my Lord, Shadow of Moses and Rasulullah. He didn't bear witness to Moses and Rasulullah. He could have did that, right? Sure. Moses came to him as a messenger. It says, We are two messengers from God. Look, chapter 20. Chapter 20, he could have said that. Look what he could have said. In chapter 20, certainly he could have said it. Chapter 20 and... Chapter 20, verse 47. Look what it says there. So we can see that Pharaoh could have bore witness to God and the messengership of Moses. Look what it says. Chapter 20, verse 40. God is telling Moses and Aaron, so go to him, go to Pharaoh, and say, surely we are two messengers of thy Lord. That's who we are. We're two messengers. So send forth the children of Israel with us, and torment them not. Indeed, we have brought you a message from the Lord, and peace be on those who follow the guides, Al-Huda. Peace be on those who follow Al-Huda. You see? Look. We're two messengers who brought what? Message. That's why we're, that's why we're messengers. Because we brought you a message from who? From the Lord, not from ourselves. We ain't got nothing for ourselves. So now, but when we go back over to chapter 10, verse 90, when he said, I believe in, in that there's no God but, but he, in whom the children of Israel believe, meaning Moses and his people, 
And I am of those who submit. That's the way he became, thought he was becoming a Muslim. Mm -hmm. He knew that that's the way he could become a Muslim. Mm -hmm. You see? He didn't think that, well, uh, you know, Moses had never told him, you know, a Pharaoh, you know, you have to believe that there's God but God and believe that I'm the messenger of God. You, and you, you should become a Muslim and follow the guidance. And you had to do that. And the Pharaoh said, well, what are you talking about? Well, you have to say, uh, there's no God but God. I bet there's no God but God. Well, shout out Muhammad, Moses and Rasulullah. And Pharaoh said, get out of here. I got no time for that foolishness. He would have known that. But he never heard nothing like that. He knew that Moses told him that there's no God but God and that you should submit yourself to God. So when the thing came on him, he said, I bear witness to no God but God. I believe in the God of Moses and I submit with Moses. Mm. He said that's what he knew he was commanded to do all along, but he was too arrogant to do it. Exactly. You see? Exactly. He knew how to become a Muslim. Exactly. He was already orientated. Okay, look. Jesus and his disciples, chapter 5, verse 11. Let's see if there's any shahada team. Chapter 5? They said versus he yes, said. And 11. I mean, he said versus they said. Chapter 5, verse 111. Oh, sorry, okay, thank you. Chapter 5, verse 111. <clears throat> Chapter 5, verse 11, 111. These are the disciples that were with Jesus. Now they knew that he was the messenger of God. Chapter 5, verse 111, And when I revealed to the disciples, saying, Believe in me and my messenger, they said, We believe and we bear witness and, and bear witness that we submit. You see? They said, you see? He is saying, versus they said. They said, We believe that there's no God but God. We believe that. And so now bear witness that we are Muslims, you see? Bear witness that we are Muslims. The hypocrites said, a shadow of lies over law, a shadow of Muhammad Rasulullah. So Allah bear witness that they are liars. Mm. But these right. people said, a shadow of lies over law, and we, uh, well, as not duly rebel on me, so Allah bear witness that they are Muslims. You see that? You see that? Yeah. They said, he is saved versus they said. Okay, let's look at Muhammad. So far we looked at Abraham. We looked at this female ruler who they say was Sheba. We looked at Pharaoh. We looked at Jesus' disciples. None of them had no shadow tame, but they were Muslims. Let's look at Muhammad. Maybe we're going to get it from him. Muhammad and the people of the book. Chapter 3, verse 19. Muhammad and the Akhlo Kitab, people of the book. <clears throat> Chapter 3, verse 19. Chapter 3, verse 19. But if they dispute with thee, say, this is what you say, this is what you say, I submit myself entirely to a law. That's what you say. I submit myself entirely to a law. And so does he who follows me. They say the same thing. Anybody who follow me, that's what they say. You see? They don't say I bear witness that the Muhammad is the messenger of the law. They say I submit myself entirely to the law. You say that, and the people who follow you, they say that. And say to those who have been given the book, and the unlearned people, do you submit yourselves? Do you submit yourselves? If they submit, then indeed they follow the right way. And if they turn back, that duty is only to deliver the message. And the law is CEO of his service. Look at that. You see? You say that you submit. And the people who follow you, tell them to say the same thing. And tell those people of the book. You see? Do they submit? You see? Because they have the book now, they have to accept this here also now. Right. You see? They might already be Muslims, but now we start rejecting this here. You're going to disqualify yourself. You're going to die not as a Muslim. You see? So now we want you to come all the way into submission. Except this as well, you see? So now, let's take a look also 
at chapter 42, verse 52. Chapter 42. Verse 52. And thus did we reveal to thee an inspired book by our command. Thou knewest not what the book was, nor what faith was, but we made it a light guiding there by whom we please of our service. And surely thou guidest to the right way. So Muhammad wasn't no Muslim born that way. He wasn't no Muslim. He didn't know what the book was. He didn't know what to believe. How could he be a Muslim? Born a Muslim. So you, we who are born Muslims, are you better than him? You born Muslims. So, you know, now, brother, I'm from uh, uh, Egypt. And you know, I was born in the family. My family, my father's Abdullah, so on, so on. Mother Umkara. And I was born Muslim. I have to do take, take no shahada and all that kind of thing. I don't have to say I submit or not. I was just birthright. That's what I am. I was born that way. I didn't declare nothing to nobody. You see? So when well, you outdo Abraham, he wasn't born that way. And now we see that you outdo Muhammad, the person who you say, he, he wasn't born that way. Allah said you didn't know what the book was, and you didn't know what to trust. You see? So Allah had to command you to submit yourself and those with you. And you said, I submit myself. Well, I'm a Muslim. I'm one of the Muslims. Now let's take a look at 2791. Twenty-seven ninety-one. You see, he didn't know what the book was. He didn't know what to trust. So let's hop over here to twenty-seven ninety-one to see how he got to be into the sea. Twenty-seven ninety-one. I am commanded only. This is all I'm commanded to serve the Lord of this city, who has made it sacred, and His are all things. And I am commanded to be of those who submit. What? You see. I'm commanded to be a Muslim. I wasn't that all. I wasn't born that way. I'm commanded to submit. So now you think he said, I shall lie in the law, shall Muhammad or Rasulullah? How do you become a Muslim, Muhammad? He said, I shall lie in the law, shall Muhammad or Rasulullah? Because that's what you're telling people all over the world. Right. Brother, raise one finger, repeat after me, I shall do, I shall do, and Muhammad. Takbir, Allahu Akbar. Mm -hmm. Your brother go take a bath, you now put this in. Mm -hmm. You are a mushrik now. Exactly. Declared mushrik. You're a mushrik. You have associated a partner with Allah. Your name and name side by side with Allah. Mm. So now, because you, the name side by side is La ilaha illallah, law, Muhammad or Rasulullah, that's side by side. And then you bore witness to it. And said, Allah, Allah, Shadu Muhammad or Rasulullah. Never mind mm -hmm. that you separated with a shadow. You're bearing witness to that Simeon, Simeon thing, that side by side. That's what you're bearing witness to, a name side by side with Allah. Right. Yeah, so Allah has condemned you for that. Now, now, so we what, see. What did you say, Simeon? Yeah. What was that? That's a. Yeah, you know what that is. No, I know side 19, by side, but yeah. I was, I was just well, spelling the word. Well, give me the verse, 19 word. what, 65 somewhere? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah of course yeah, you know just, uh, Of course he knows. Spelling. But he's a shake, shake in disguise, <laughs> hitting on the down low. <laughs> he's, a he's a shake on the down low. <laughs> you know, shake, you know. shake down the road. Yeah. <laughs> no, I was just trying to find out how you spell it. You know what you're talking about. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Where's that at, what'd you say? <laughs> Uh, shake on the uh, down low. That was too sharp, huh? <laughs> Look. No doubt. <laughs> Look, man. 
So now we've seen Abraham, we've seen the female ruler, we've seen Pharaoh, we've seen the disciples of Jesus, we've seen Muhammad and his companion, the people of the book. Ain't nobody had no shot to tame. Well, let's look, look at mankind in general, the whole of mankind. The whole of mankind in general, 46.15. 46.15. So far we see the double shahada is only the hypocrites. Only the hypocrites have the double shahada. The shahada team. The shahada Muhammad Rasulullah. Only the hypocrites are saying that shahada Muhammad Rasulullah. Only the hypocrites are saying that. And Allah said they are liars. We don't want to be saying that. We don't want to be saying that otherwise we're going to become liars as well. Look, mankind. 46.15. Look, and we haven't joined upon man, out in sand, you see, doing a good to his parents. His mother bears him with trouble, and she brings him forth in pain. And the bearing of him and the weaning of him is thirty months, till when he attains maturity and reaches forty years. Look at that. According to the Quranic terminology, a person is mature and ripe at the age of 40, not 21, 18, and all this mess we doing. You're still an idiot <laughs> at that age. You don't know what, the, what you're doing. 21. When I was 21, I was crazier than a bat. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking I'm grown. I'm grown. You tell me what to do. Right. 21. Right. Crazy is mad. With 40 now, you kind of calm down. You're right. So Allah says maturity until he reaches the age of 40. <clears throat> now he says, here's what he says, mankind in general. He says, my Lord, grant me that I might give thanks for thy favor. That's what you like that. <laughs> which thou have bestowed on me and on my parents, and that I may do, do good which pleases thee, and be good to me in respect of my offspring. Truly I turn to thee, and truly, I am of those who submit. That's what he says. I turn to you. I bear witness to no God but you. That's a turning to you. I bet you alone. And I'm of those who submit. You tell me what I got to do now. You, di you dictate for me what my lifestyle is. I'll do that. Because I know this is transitory. I'm just in here passing through. I'm not to be staying here. I want to get to the other side and, and the greater reward is in store for me. So you tell me what I got to do. Mankind in general. There's no shahada tame there. Okay, let's look at the Arabs. The Arabs. The Arabs. Now here's the bread and butter. This will shut everybody down in case they, anybody want to quibble about this here. This is going to take the, take the, slam the lid on the thing. This is going to slam the lid on it. Look. Let's right here. Chapter 49. On that verse 14. Starting at verse 14. You said 49? Chapter 49. This is the Arabs now. The Arabs who came right there to the to the messenger. If anybody knows that there's going to be a Muslim, now the messenger right there, he's calling the people, so he's going to tell them how to become Muslims. All right. He's going to call the people, the Arabs and all that. Who's this guy? This is Muhammad. You know, he's going to be the guy running around here quoting things and saying he's a prophet, a messenger. And some people say he's a poet, he's mad and all that. Well, let's go here. Excuse me, what he got to say? Let's go here, the man. Don't be so quick to judge. You see, what do we know about anything? We're just a bunch of camel jockeys, <laughs> sheep herders, Bedouins, you know, desert men. The guy might have something going on. We heard about stuff like that from the Jewish people and Christians and all that. Let's go here, you see. So now he's going to, they're going to come to him. So now he's going to dictate to them, tell them certain things, and he's going to tell them how they should be a Muslim. Let's see if Muhammad tells the people who walk up to him and say, Look, brother, hold your finger up and say, Shadow of Allah, Allah, Shadow of Muhammad, Allah, Rasulullah. Let's see. Let's take a look right here. No. The Arabs, you see, the dwellers of the desert, that's the Arabs, you see. Al Arabu, Al Arabu, Arab, Arabu, the Arab. The Arabs say, the dwellers of the desert say, this is what they say, we believe. Now, they heard that they came, they heard and said, wow, 
You know, that makes sense. That makes sense. We believe. We believe. Yeah, Muhammad. We believe. Who said that? This group of people over there. We believe. So I said, look, say, tell them, tell them, check them right now. They want to skip something. They want to jump up to belief already. Mm -hmm. You see, they want to skip to the top of the line. <laughs> this is what this guy doing. You know, what you can probably you have to stand in the line there. The line is over there. You come right up to the front, and, you know, let me in. So, brother, you just, these people were here already. You got to go back to the end of the line. Start where you're supposed to. You see? Right. They say we believe. So tell them. Say, you believe not. You believe not. You believe not. But say, but do, do what? Say. This is what you say. Say this. Tell them to say this. We submit. You see? Tell them we su to say we submit. Why? Because faith has not entered your hearts. Faith is not in your heart. You ain't no believer. How you talking about believer? You ain't even submitted. <laughs> you ain't even submitted yet. Exactly. You believe already. You see? You go to school and then you went to school this week and then you go and ask the principal, excuse me, I need my diploma. So, diploma? Yeah, I came to school. Since I came to school, <laughs> brother, you have semesters and all that. You have to go through and do tests and exams. And what are you talking about? What kind of nut is this? He went to school and he wants a diploma right away. You see? No. It don't go like that. Say, say we submit. Say we submit. Say we submit. Say that. Faith and I. And if you obey Allah and his messenger, he will not diminish all of your deeds. Surely Allah is forgiven and merciful. You see, now, so submit. Submit first. And then begin to obey Allah and his messenger, meaning the message that he's given you. And Allah will count your deeds up. And your deeds will weigh up, and then maybe you can be, become a believer. You know, if you got your deeds, well, all of them, well, how do I get the believer? So, well, look, do the deeds and all that, and you'll get up there, and then Allah won't get this. So, well, what do you think, Allah, am I uh, qualified yet? Yeah, you, oh, you believe. You believe. You see, you've been at this for a while with your deeds, you believe. The believers are. Look, he's going to tell you right here now, look. The believers are those who believe in Allah and His Messenger, and they, and they doubt not, and they struggle hard with their wealth and their lives in the way of Allah. Such are the truthful ones. You ain't did that. You ain't did nothing like that. You just walked out of the desert talking about you believe. You heard a lecture. You heard the man talking. You said, we believe. So that, now we like that. That's good. But no, calm down. Say you submit first. And then struggle hard with your life and your wealth and your things and earn, earn your keep. Earn your way up. Allah's not going to diminish nothing that you do. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, you see? Now, charge you some more. Say, would you apprise the law of your dean, of your religion? You're going to tell them now. You got, you got something you want to run off and say now. And the law knows what is in the heavens and what is in the earth. And the law is know of all things. Now, here's what happened now. Now, the people who became Muslims, now here's what is said about them. You see, when they said they submit, now the law says, they presume to lay the on the obligation by becoming <coughs> Muslims. They think they're gonna lay you under an obligation by becoming Muslim. Now well you know brother what you, you know we you we said we believe and you said don't say that. Say you submit. So now we said we submitted. Mm. Now what you got for us? You know what you you know what you gonna do for us? What you got for us? Do you know we join you. Mm. You have an obligation to us now. Mm. You see, you know, we join your group, what you into. You see? They presume to lay you on an obligation by becoming Muslim. Say, no. Say, lay me not on an obligation. Don't lay me by your Islam, by your submission, by your obedience. Rather, Allah lays you on an obligation by guiding you to the faith, if you're truthful. He put the obligation on you. He's the one who guided you to this. Don't come talk to me. Then this ain't no party thing you join with me. This is not a club you join with me. They try to Muhammad like, Dan's. You ain't no Muhammad Dan's. Try to say that if they mess up, you try to put on the Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, right. You know, we, we, we Muhammad Dan's, you see. We got our beard color like you, and we do everything you do, we doing that. What you doing for us now? Look, we Emmett, yes yeah, so no. You know, don't put me in that. Allah's the one guiding you to this here. You owe that obligation to Allah for guiding you. 
my job is just to give you this message, you know. And of course, I set the example among you all that because I'm doing it too. So, they didn't have to say, become Muslim. They had to say, they submit. Right. See, hearsay versus they say. Because your shahada and all that is hearsay. There's no way in the Quran. It's hearsay versus they say. Now, conclusion. Because you remember over here, I said conclusion, what's in your speech? So conclusion, 41, 30C, 33. Look at that conclusion. I mean, like a new. Forty-one thirty-three. I used to quote this all the time. Well, man, Who is better in speech? Because as a da'i, I used to use this verse. And who is better in speech? If you got something to say, open your mouth and talk. Who's the best one to do some talking? Who is better in speech? Than one who calls to a law. That means a law alone, not a law and. A law alone. Does good and says, and what? And says, I am of the Muslims. He says that. He's bet who's who's the speech you're gonna say, who's better speech? Not the person who says a shadow line law, shadow mama or sum law, not him. The person who calls to the way of a law. Calls to the way of a law. How's that done? Let's take a look. Real quick. Chapter three. Chapter three. Verse 63 is one example of that, of the message of that call. The, 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 uh, sub, the uh, subject matter of that call. Chapter 3, verse 63. Who's better in speech than one who calls to the way of law? What, if, what, what should we be calling them to? Well, here it is right here. 363. Mm -hmm. Say, say to them, O people of the book, come to an equitable word between you and us, us and you. That we shall serve none but Allah, and that we shall not associate aught with him, and that some of us shall not take from among ourselves lords besides Allah. But if they turn back and say, we bear witness that we're Muslim, there's no compromise, there's nothing else to talk about. If you don't want to get down with Tawheed, right. there's no further conversation. Well, say, brother, look. You know, that let's, let's, let's not talk about these things don't divide us, you know, because we believe that Jesus is God. You believe that he's just a prophet. We believe that Moses is there's not, not him. You believe, believe. Let's talk about the things we have in common. Let's talk about the things we have in common. You see, the things that unite us. Allah says, no, never mind that mess. Let's talk about Allah first. That's what we have in common. That's what unites us. Oh, people of the book. Come to an equitable word, a, a word that we all can be on the same plane with. That what? That we serve for none but Allah. And we don't associate aught with him. And that some of us won't take from among ourselves people and raise them to positions other than Allah. Right. Now, if you can't get together on that platform, there's no further conversation and bear witness that we're Muslims. There's nothing else to talk about. We're going to we'll put that on the side and, brother, let's talk about what we have in common. You know, the school in our neighborhoods, we need schools so the Muslim Jews and everybody, we can build a school. And over here, you know, uh, they talk about that. We let's agree with that and the whole hands and the Hanukkah and the lighting the candles and all that. And but then faith, faith, unity, prayer meeting. Let's talk about that. Jesus, will you let you be a silent prayer? No, none of that mess. Let's name what we're doing here. That we serve for none but Allah. You see? Your book says that. My book says that. Every book says that. You see? Let's get together on that platform. So that you can think about everything else. The question and all that. And, and what's going on in the world. Let's get together on that platform. Why don't you get together and think about who God is. And how we're going to serve for him. You don't want to do that. That you want to put it on the side. So. 
who is better in speech than one who calls the Lord, does good, and says, I am not the Muslims. Okay, there you go. There's no shahadatain. The shahadatain is shirk. Mm. You see? You associate my partner, partner with God. You see? And that's 1965, we said? Mm. Let's take a look. <clears throat> I think a Saudi would put it. I think a Saudi would put it in better. I got them right here in the book, so we will just read them. Oh, yeah, I got them right here. 1965. What does it say? The Lord of the heavens and the earth, and what is between them, so serve him and be patient in his service. Knowest, knowest thou any one equal to him? Mm. And the, and Muhammad Assad in his Quran has translated it this way. Know any whose name is worthy to be mentioned side by side with his? Look at that. Do you know any name that's worthy to be mentioned side by side with his? For example, La ilaha illallah, side by side, Muhammad or Rasulullah. You know anybody? That's nowhere in the Quran you ever see that ever. You'll never see in the Quran Allah and right after that Muhammad. Never ever. You will never see in the Quran Allah and anybody's name right after that with his. Never in the Quran. No name side by side with Allah in the Quran. No way ever. Yet you say, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah, La ilaha illallah, Muhammad. Somebody yeah. taught you that. Sure did. And now they say, brother, you want to get down with this here, what we're doing? You have to bear witness. Bear witness to what we're saying. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Ashadu anna Muhammad al-Rasul. Takbir. Takbir. Allahu Akbar. Just more foolishness. More shirk. More <laughs> See? More foolishness. <laughs> so now, Allah has said, we said before, Allah says, oh, you believe, keep your duty to Allah that ought to be kept and die not unless you are Muslims. So now anybody, and I can say this right now, I, if I ever present this, this talk, I open it up by saying that anybody who has entered into the fold of Islam by thinking that they were born that way, or they took the shahada tain and all that, they need to reje reject that right now on this spot no and declare that they are Muslims now, the way Allah has said. No. That they bear which is that there's no God but Allah, and they submit themselves to the law of the world. They need to say that, like we can say it right now in public, since yeah. we're right here, but if they don't want to feel that so they need to do it now, they need to say it before death catches them, because until that point, they are not Muslims. You know, you're dying not being a Muslim. You never said that you were Muslim. You're not better than Abraham. Allah said to guide him at a certain stage in his life, and told them to declare that you're a Muslim. The God Muhammad at a certain day said, told them to command, I'm commanded to be of the Muslims. I'm commanded to be of them. They're right there already, so I'm with them. Muslims are already here. I'm commanded to be of the Muslims. They were already here. I'm commanded who, Muhammad, who you are? Yeah, I was in with these pagans. I was raised up in paganism, you see. I didn't know what the book was. I didn't know what the tr trust. Allah said, well, there's some Muslims around here. The people who we gave the book and all that, they believe in and trust it and they know who you are. Get with them. Get with them. So recite this to them. They said, oh, when we heard it, we were already Muslims. So we with you. I'm with you. You see? I'm with you. So does anybody here think that they need to re renounce that shahadatain? I don't know how you became Muslim. Oh, by 2-131. To 131. Right. Okay. So, oh, that, when you were you was Muslim before that, or you? No, no. I'm saying I did. I officially became Muslim. Where I, oh, okay. So you right. renounced that other thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? How about you, Missy? <laughs> because the law says, "Don't right. die unless you have surrendered to Him." It's the very right. same. The law says, "Maybe we will, will wish that you were Muslims." That you have surrendered to God is a very simple process. Right. You see? It's simple. I mean. There's no other way of life prescribed by God except submission to Him. Anything other than that is something that man has orchestrated for you. And anybody who got something else that they think it might be more sufficient, superb, better than this, then put it on the table and let us check it out. If it is, I'm, afraid, I'm you know, like the message said, bring me a guide, a book that's a better guide than these two guides, and I'll follow it. So bring me, bring me today, a guide, a doctrine that's better than this Quran, 
and I'll follow it right now. I'll get down with it myself. Once I examine it, I'll get down with it. Anybody got something for me to look at? You see, I'm not going to be stagnated here if you got something better. I'm saying you don't have nothing better. But if somebody challenge me and bring me something better, you can dictate to me something beyond what this Quran can. You see? That can tell me that there's some creature who created the heavens and the earth and show me proof of that. Show me something that they've done. Show me some evidence. That they're not, that not known now, before, that they got from somewhere. You see? Evidence, you see? Awesome. No, I'll get down with that. Um, it's amazing, I just want to say that. Yeah. You know? yeah. Um, as a human being, and th and I guess my part personality, mm. even if I was, say, I was a Christian or mm. Jewish, whatever, mm. um, I wouldn't just jump into it. I would mm. let it sink into me mm. first. Mm. That's how my personality is. Mm. I mean, th some of the questions that I had was lingering. It was mm. amazing that how you actually kind of blew it. Yeah. Look, it was amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so, I mean, do I think is it right to say I submit? Mm -hmm. I do think you know the right to say submit. Okay, that's all. That's all. I still that's guide. I still seek his guidance. Mm -hmm. Al I guess the word mm -hmm. because yeah. I do come across and obviously even though Arabic is not, I'm saying it's mm -hmm. my mother tongue, mm -hmm. and I don't know every single word, but I do come across even translations that are kind of distorted. Mm -hmm. But a lot of them you already answer how these people yeah. actually uh, hijacked yeah. okay, and moved us. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm still trying to sink in all that information, yeah. okay? Yeah. And I see that, you know, there's a lot of things that was already answered. Yeah. Um, and even though if we say, you know, we submit, mm -hmm. I think that going back to the book is very important. And I, mm -hmm. I try to give as much as time, okay? Mm -hmm. I guess that's where he's just fine, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, if you're saying we believe in a lot, but it doesn't yeah. really, you have to really submit completely. You have okay? to say that you You have to say that you submit yeah, yeah. and then start right. doing it. Yeah, right. yeah. You see, you have to say that you have to declare to your creator that you submit to him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He told Abraham that I say you submit. You're not better than Abraham. Look how God talks about Abraham. Every book talks about Abraham, pretty much at least the Torah, the, the Gospel, and the Quran. They talk about Abraham big time. So, Brother Hamza, let me ask you one question. Yeah. One. Okay, because one of those words in chapter you actually said that a man is not mature until he's 40. Yeah. Let's just say uh, it's, a human being. Person. Yeah, human being. Okay, yeah. so someone actually dies non-Muslim. Yeah. Is that excuse that person is not really mature yet? No, no, no. That, see, God judges a person by their ability to know and the access of the knowledge. Oh. Do you have access to knowledge and your ability to grasp and understand the knowledge? He's going to judge you based on that. So a child who's uh, mentally disturbed, handicapped to some degree, not. Yeah. God's not going to punish that child. A person, you understand, in some remote part of the world who has no access to learning and, and prevent it from learning and all that, they have basically an instinct that they work on. If that instinct, God looks at that you have worked on that instinct in a certain manner, he's going to hold you accountable for that. You see, he's telling you in the Quran, chapter 7, look, He's provided for that for a global concept for every human being that exists on the earth. Nobody can have a problem. In chapter 7, verse 172 and 173. Look, this is for every human being that exists on the earth. This is, they're held accountable to this, this law that has been put in place already. In their human nature, in their DNA. It's designed, they are designed with this here, wherever you are. Now, Allah tells you that he brought you forth. Look, look what he talks about the womb. He says, look, and when that Lord brought you forth from the children, brought you, brought forth from the children of Adam, they, from their loins, their descendants, and made them bear witness about themselves. You see, made them bear witness about themselves. Am I not your Lord? You see, they said, yes, we bear witness. Lest you should say on the day of resurrection, we were unaware of this. Mm -hmm. This is in your DNA, planted in your system, that you know that God is your creator. That you know that. You see? Now, 73. Or, lest you should say, only our fathers ascribed partners to Allah before, and we were, uh, uh, and we were their descendants after them. 
Will thou destroy us for, for what they what the liars did? You you know our fathers did that, and we followed them. They, my parents was Christians, and so I was born Christian. So I just stayed Christian, and the people around me said, "Brother, you know Jesus did that for you. I don't care about my parents did this. Brother, you should be Muslim. I don't care about that. I'm over here. I'm free thinking, thinking for myself, whatever mm -hmm. I want to be." Hmm. You see, you have you have an obligation to be what God has determined for you, not what you want. You have an obligation to be what God has determined for you, not what you want to be. See, he says, verse one seventy four, and thus do we make the message clear for clear that happily they may return. We make the message clear, you see, mm -hmm. that happily they may return. You see, so we see that it's been planted already in your DNA, you see, in your DNA, what you should be. Now had the truth become manifest, Hamza. That's what it is. Yeah. Only law, brother. See? So this is the this is the situation. There's no taking your shahada and becoming Muslim and all that mess. Right. Mm -hmm. This is a good point too, man. See? It is. Because yeah. long, long, yeah, you just gave me a additional information to drop on the family, mm -hmm. you, know? you know, in terms of children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's a big deal. He got it. I don't know. Mm -hmm. So even Jesus said something about that in his book. Look, if you look, I mean, if you look at the hardcore what's in this book here, because they, the law says, go to the right, those who write the book with their own hands, says from God. You see, so the Quran has come to God what's in here that's truthful. Muhammad, this is called Muhammad. It's like an assembly line where you got stuff coming by and you kick out the bad ones and let the good ones go through. And you got bad ones, take that out, take that out. I used to work at a candy place and the candy would come through and the broken pieces, you take them off the line. You see, because they're getting wrapped down there. So you have to break out, take those off. That was a conveyor belt. So the Quran is like a conveyor belt regarding the other scriptures. Kicks out what is defective, you see, and keeps what is good. So now let's look, let's look what is good in here. Mark, chapter 3, and starting at verse uh, 31. This talks about a time, according to the Christians who give us this history now, when Jesus was around 12, 14 years old or something, and he was in the marketplace with his parents, and he got disconnected from them somehow or another. And so he went into a synagogue and sat in the synagogue there uh, with the people in the synagogue. And he was sitting in there, and he was asking questions and talking and teaching one thing after another. So look, in verse 31 it says, Then there came then his brethren, and his mother is standing outside and sent unto them, calling them. You see, they were calling for him. When Jesus, Jesus, excuse me, you see a little boy in there named Jesus? Yeah, to tell him his parents is outside looking for him. Is he in there? And the multitude sat about him, and they said unto him, Behold, thy mother and thy brother outside looking for you. They said, Excuse me, any Jesus in here? Yeah, my name is Jesus. Well, brother, your mother and your father, they're out there looking for you, man. Well, you, they know where you are. Look what he says. And he looked around, verse 34, and verse 33, and he answered and said unto them, Who is my mother, and who is my brethren? Verse 34, and he looked around about him with those who sat around him in the synagogue there. He looked at them, and he said, Behold my mother and my brethren, these people in here, for whosoever shall do the will of God, mm. the same as my brother and my sister and my mother. Mm -hmm. Lord, Whoever does God's will, that's my, my, my brother, my sister, my mother right there. Right. Whoever, who, whoever, whoever does God's will, doing the will of God. So now we have to know what God's will is and do it. Mm 